right, good morning, everybody. My name is Brian Mosley. I serve as the lead pastor here. I want to welcome you all here, and also uh, those of you who may be tuning in by way of YouTube, I want to welcome you as well. I feel like God has a very important message for us today as we, talk to, as we ask the question and answer the question according to what the Bible says. What is God's will? How can I know God's will for my life? Have you ever asked that question before? All right, two of you have. Have you ever asked that question before? Okay, like what is God's will? What's he doing in my life? Like what does he want me to do? What decisions does he want me to make for my life? Like I remember as a, as a child, uh, making decisions was really easy. Like I went with my gut. Or if somebody had a, a, a disagreement with me, what'd we do? Rock, paper, scissors. All right? We did that. So come, on, come on, everybody, come on. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay, I got scissors. What do you got? Okay, if you got scissors, you do it with me again. One, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. I got rock this time. Okay, all right, that's just fine. But what we, what we, what we do as, as children and as we grow up, we, we find that decisions carry weight, The older we get, the more we understand decisions, our life decisions, are important. The decisions that we make today affect our destinies. It affects the the rest of our lives, our futures. And so as a a young Christian, I just remember myself, when I became born-again Christian at the age of 17, uh, my desire to know and do God's will just exploded in my heart. Like before that, there was no thought of what does God want me to do? No, it was just all about me, right? I wanted to do what I wanted to do. I don't care what God has in mind, right? But I got born again and the Holy Spirit began changing desires in me and I began wanting to know what is God's will for my life? What is God's will for my decisions? And at that time, I was thinking about things like, what college should I attend? Or what should my major be? Or who should I marry? Or what, what current friends are good for me? And what current friends are bad influences for me? I was thinking about things like, how am I serving at my church? Am I serving in a way that I need to be serving? How am I using my gifts, my talents, And my resources, is my life pleasing to the Lord? This is the question that I began to be consumed with. Because I wanted my life to count for something. And I still do. I want my life to make a difference. And and I want my life to be always moving in God's direction. In His time. And so my constant question became, starting when I got born again at 17, how can I know God's will for my life? Maybe you've asked this question before. Maybe you're always asking it. Maybe you're asking it right now in this season of your life in regards to your relationships, in regards to your schooling, in regards to your work, in regards to any important decisions or certain situations or, or any kind of fork in the road circumstances that you may be facing in your life. Let me, let me encourage you with this. If you're thinking about this question right here, it is a sure sign that God is at work in your life. It is a sure sign that he is, he is actively working in a beautiful and wonderful way. If you are asking the question, God, what is your will for me? That is a good indication for you. Let me show it to you in scripture. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, the apostle Paul says this. This is powerful. For God is working in you. Giving you the desire. Everybody say desire. Desire. Giving you the desire and the, what? The power to do what pleases him. In other words, he gives you the desire, the want to. And he empowers you to carry out his will for your life. Now, it's important that we understand the will of God. And the the way that I understand it by my reading of Scripture is that God's will can be viewed as in two different parts. 
Okay, it's God's general will for his children, for the world. This applies to, to everybody, right? These are, these are the things, we'll talk about them more in a minute. But the, his general will. And then his specific will. This is for an individual believer, okay? So his general will, we learn by reading the scripture, right? And we see things like God's will for us is that we be sanctified, that we be growing in holiness, right? We know that from scripture. It's his will for everyone. Also, his will is that we behave rightly, like we have right actions and we believe correctly. It's his will that we live a prayerful life, right, and I have a thankful heart. It's what it says in the Bible. We should, be, we should do that. We should be, have our lives fully surrendered to him. I love the verse in Romans chapter 12. This, it's not up on your screen or any, anything, but it says this. In view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. It's God's will that we surrender fully to him. It's God's will that we are transformed by the renewing of our mind, right? According because that same verse goes on to say, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? So that you may be able to test and approve what God's perfect, acceptable will is. God's will is that we love him. Right? And that we love other people. God's will is that we are on mission. He says in his word, like, go out and preach the gospel to every creature. Like, this is God's general will. Are you following with me? It applies to all of his believers. But I think the question that most of us wrestle with is what is God's specific will for me? For, for my life, for my situations, or what's his assignment for me? And I want you to think about this. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, this is one of my favorite scriptures in the entire New Testament. It says this, for we are God's handiwork. Everybody say handiwork. Created in Christ Jesus, Why? To do good works. And let me tell you, and Paul says something about those good works. They have been prepared in advance, beforehand, by God for us to walk in those good works. We are God's handiwork. I looked at some of this, uh, the scripture in the Greek, and it says things like, we are God's workmanship. We are God's work of art. We are God's a great accomplishment. We are God's masterpiece. I love the way it says in the uh, Passion Translation, it says, we have become his poetry. Think about how amazing that is. We have become his poetry, a recreated people that will fulfill the destiny that he has given to each of us. And I want you to think about the, this verse, especially in the light of God's specific will for you. How many of you know that you were created on purpose for a purpose? There's a special design that God has made in your life, and he has created you not to be junk. How many of you know that God does not create junk, right? If you think you're garbage, if you think you're trash, wrong. You are God's masterpiece. You are his handiwork. You are his beautiful work of art, and he has a wonderful plan and purpose for your life. So let me give you a few thoughts that have helped me kind of process this idea of how God has wired me. Let me say it this way. Your your design is a clue to your destiny. You might want to jot that down. How you were designed by God is a clue for you about God's destiny and purpose for your life. Let me say it this way. How you're wired is a clue to your purpose. How you're wired, how you're designed, it's very, very important. And if this is up on the screen, if you want to know more about God's specific will for your life, 
prayerfully consider how God has shaped you. Have you ever thought about how wonderfully and beautifully God has shaped you? If you prayerfully consider how God has molded and and done things in your life and given you certain things, gifts and passions and, and things that you love and things that you hate and things that grieve you, have you ever considered your shape? Because if you haven't, you need to know that your shape is a big clue to God's specific will for your life. Let me, let me show it to you and give you a few more ideas. Let's take this a little bit deeper. Everybody still with me? Okay, so now let's talk about S. This is an acrostic shape, okay? So write down S. This stands for your spiritual gifts. How many of you know that God blesses his people through the Holy Spirit with spiritual gifts? Gifts. What are spiritual gifts? These are God given abilities and empowerments that you cannot do on your own. These are only given to believers. And the Holy Spirit distributes those spiritual gifts as He wills, as He decides to whom he wants to give. So they are gifts. They are not something that you earn. They are not something that you deserve. And they are given not just for your benefit, but for the benefit of the entire body of Christ. And the spiritual gifts are not to draw attention to yourself and say, oh, look how gifted I am in God. No, their spiritual gifts are meant for the benefit and the good of everybody around you but God gives spiritual gifts and it's important that you discover what yours are this is a clue to God's specific will for your life the spiritual gifts are um, listed in the book of Romans and 1 Corinthians so study those books in your quiet time if you want to learn more about these but spiritual gifts are gifts like prophecy like serving Teaching, exhortation, giving, leadership, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, faith, gifts of healing. All of these things are in the Bible. The working of miracles, uh, the discerning of spirits, speaking in tongues and the interpretation of those tongues. And I want to tell you, we are a church that believes and embraces what the Bible teaches about all the spiritual gifts, even the controversial ones. They're all from God, and they're all taught in, 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 uh, clearly in the Bible. And we don't want to push away something just because we don't fully understand it. If it's in the Bible, it's in the Bible, right? Okay. Look at 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. And Peter encourages the church. He said, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. This is Peter's way of saying, you've been, giving a, you've been given a gift Make sure that you open it and make sure that you unwrap it. Make sure you discover what it is and that what? You put it to use. Put your gifts to use. H, okay? S was spiritual gift. H is heart. Okay, I want to talk about this a little bit more because the Bible uses the term heart to describe that, that bundle of desires, that core uh, of you, your, your hopes, your interests, your ambitions, your dream, the seat of your affections. What your heart represents is the source of everything that you are and your, the source of all your motivations. It's what you love to do. It's what you care about the most. God has shaped your heart and created your heart in a certain way. Your heart reveals the true you, like who you truly are, not what people might think that you are, but who you really are. Your heart determines what you say. Your heart determines what you feel. Your heart determines why you act the way that you do. 
Your heart is that source. And in Psalm 37, verse 4, look at this with me. It says, take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, sometimes we can kind of misinterpret what that says, saying, thinking that, well, God's just going to give me everything that I want, right? Is that true? No, it's not true. But as you take delight in the Lord, as you revel in, his, in the relationship that you have with him, as you enjoy prayer and worship and spending time with other believers, as you delight yourself in the Lord, guess what? God will download or upload, whatever way you want to describe it. God will give you the desires of your heart. And so your desires will end up in alignment with his desires. This is your heart. This is what the Holy Spirit does in each one of us as we delight ourselves in the Lord. Let me give you three statements that have helped me think about what has God put in my heart. Number one is this. What you love is a clue to the gifts, the skills, and the wisdom that you possess. What is it that you love? What is it that you love? If you pay attention to those things, it'll help you to discover God's specific will for you. Not only is it what you love, but this, here's the second statement. Jot this down if you're taking notes or take a picture of it. It's this. What grieves you is a clue to something that you may be assigned to heal. What is it that grieves you? What is it that burdens you? What is it that, that bothers you so much? Listen to your tears. Did you know that your tears talk? What you cry about is a clue to something that God may use your life to bring healing to. And the third statement is this. What you hate is a clue to something that you may be assigned to correct. Now remember, we're talking about God's specific will for you. And we're talking about how God has shaped your heart. What is it that you love? What is it that grieves you? And what is it that you cannot stand? These are clues to helping us to understand what does God want me to do with my life? What is my destiny? What is my purpose? How does God want to use me in my life? Okay. A, everybody still with me? Okay, A is abilities. Your abilities, these are different than spiritual gifts. Your abilities are your natural gifts, the things that you are naturally good at, your strengths. These are natural talents that you're born with. Some people have a natural ability with words, right? They come out of the womb talking. And they just keep talking. Anybody know anybody like that? I love you, Ashley. Other people have a natural athletic ability. Like they're good at, at being athletic, like sports and being coordinated and all that. Somebody said, that's me. All right. All right, Sal, that's you. Others are good at things like math and science or uh, things like music or mechanics. These are things that are from God, but they are given to us, and they are given to us to steward and develop their natural strengths. They are talents. All of us have something, some abilities, that we have been given from God. And listen to me, every ability can be used for God's glory. Everything that God has given to you can be used for his glory. And you are the only person on this earth that can use your abilities. Nobody else can use what God has given to you. <clears throat> God has a plan and he has equipped you 
with what you need to fulfill that plan. If God hasn't given you the ability to carry a tune, he's probably not going to lead you or call you to serve on the worship team, right? Okay. I, I said Ashley once. I don't want to go there again, but because I'll hear it after church. But here's the thing. The abilities that you do have are a strong indication for how God wants to use your life. You want to know his specific will? Think about your spiritual gifts. Think about what he has put in your heart. And think about your natural abilities. Is this, is this making sense to anybody? Okay. All right. Let's go to P. Personality. Now, one thing is very obvious when we talk about personality. God loves variety. Right? He loves variety. Just look around in this room. He created some of us with a, uh, with, with a desire or a, a wiring to be introverts. Like it takes a lot for us to be out in front of people and hanging out and stuff. He created, he created some of us to be extroverts. Like we hate being alone, right? We get our energy when we're around other people. Introverts, extroverts. He made people who love routine. Just give me a schedule. Just give me a regular routine and I'm good. He made other people to be like, oh, I hate routine. Let's just have fun. Let's just be spontaneous, right? Okay. He made some of us to be thinkers. Man, we like to think things through, right? He made, he made some of us to be feelers. Like we feel everything. <clears throat> some people work best when they're given an individual assignment. And some people work best as part of a team, right? God loves variety. And I want you to think about your personality not as a curse but as a blessing. Right? Because sometimes we can begin to think, oh, I wish I wasn't so much like this. Or I wish I was more like this person. And we start comparing and we start envying and we start wanting to be not who God created us to be. So look at your personality as a gift from God. Thank you. <laughs> Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Paul says this, and there are different ways that God works in people. Did you catch that? There are different ways that God works in people, but it is the same God. It is the same God who works in all of us to do everything. We need all kinds of personalities in the body of Christ. We need all kinds of flavors. How boring would it be if we were all vanilla? Right? How boring would it be? God loves your unique personality and he blessed you with it and don't resent it. Your unique personality is a clue to knowing God's specific will for your life. Amen? Amen? All right, that's P. Now let's go to E. Experience. <clears throat> You've been shaped by your experiences in life. M most of your experiences have been maybe out of your control. But God allowed them in your life for the purpose of molding them and using them for His glory. Think about your family experiences. Think about how you grew up. How were you raised? Did you, how were you treated by your mom and dad or your brothers and sisters? Think about what God has been doing even in your family growing up. Think about your educational experiences. Like what have you learned? What's, what was your favorite subject in school? These are all clues to help you see how God has designed you 
Think about your vocational experiences. What jobs have you had? And what have you most enjoyed about those jobs? Think about your spiritual experiences. What have been your times with God that have been most meaningful and impactful in your life? Your experience, your experiences have shaped you, have molded you into the man, the woman, the boy, the girl that you are today. Think about your ministry experiences. Think about you, how you have served God in the past. Think about those times where you felt most used by God. How about those times where you felt most fulfilled in your life? What were those spiritual experiences? Those are clues to helping you understand your destiny. And I would tell you this, think about your painful experiences. Your painful experiences. What, what problems have you been through? What hurts have you experienced in your life? What, what trials have you experienced and you have come out through on the other side? What have you learned from those painful experiences in your life? The truth is that God uses the most painful experiences in our lives to prepare us for his service. And so we don't need to neg neglect them. We don't need to resent them. We don't need to ignore them. We need to learn from them. Because it's those painful experiences that God will use for us to most impact somebody else's life. Let me say it like this. Your greatest ministry will likely come out of your greatest hurt. God never wastes a hurt. Look at what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. Paul says this. He comforts us. God comforts us in all our troubles. Why? So that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. In other words, the very experiences that have caused you pain, that have caused you hurt, the very experiences that maybe you have resented or regretted in your life, those experiences, those experiences that you want to just hide and forget about and leave in the past. They, it is those experiences that God wants to use in your life to help somebody else. You love me, don't you? All right, I love you too. We have to make sure that we're opening, opening ourselves up to receive our own healing, to receive our own comfort from God. To not close down, to not become isolated, but to open up our hearts and ask God to touch us on the inside. And as he ministers that healing to us, if you're rejecting God, you're rejecting your healer. But if you open up your heart to ask him to heal you, to help you, and you confess to him, hey, I've been hurt I've gone through this trial, and I don't know how to fix it. I don't know what to do, but I'm going to you, Father. You're my healer. Do your healing work in me, and he will faithfully bring healing from the inside out. And then guess what he will do? He will use you and the healing that you've experienced to minister to somebody else who's maybe going through the same hurt. Let me go ahead and invite uh, Yanawa back up as I get ready to close. But I want to encourage you with this. You are the only one that God has shaped and anointed for your specific assignment. You're the only one. I want you to see how unique you are. 
If you want to know God's specific will for your life, consider your God-given shape. Consider how he has made you beautifully and fearfully. And I want you to know that God loves you and he does have a plan and a purpose for you. For you. It may be easy to believe that about someone else. Oh, God's got a plan for this person or for that person or for this family because they've got spiritual gifts. They've got a great personality. And I believe that about this other person. But how about believing it about you? He loves you. I hope you feel his passion, his love pursuing you today. And I hope you feel his heart because he wants to use your life in a very specific way for his glory and to advance his kingdom. Amen? So what do you do when you want to know God's will for your life? What do you do when paper, rock, scissors is just not going to cut it, right? I want to leave you with these few things. Jot these down if you're taking notes. Prayerfully consider your shape. Prayerfully consider how God has shaped you. And number two, listen for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. How many of you know that God speaks? Boy, he will speak to you if you're seeking his specific will for your life and you're prayerfully considering how he made, the Holy Spirit is going to guide you into all truth. He's going to speak to you and he's going to open doors for you. He's going to open doors of opportunity. Why? To use your life for his purposes. Are you open to that? Are you open to hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit in your life? Number three, I would tell you to do this. You've got to step out in faith. Sometimes God's going to lead you to do something, and you're not going to know 100% that it's God, first of all, or, or that it's going to work out. You might have a feeling like, okay, I feel like God is leading me to this, but God's going to require an act of faith from you. When God speaks, he's going to require that you take action according to your faith. Why? Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. The just shall walk by faith. God's going to speak to you, and it's your responsibility to take action, and sometimes it's scary, but you got to do it afraid, and you got to say, Lord, I feel like you're leading me in this direction, and I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to take a leap of faith, and I'm going to do what you called me to do in this area. Take that step of faith. And number four, I would tell you this, you got to trust God for the results. Trust him with the outcome. You can't control everything. You're not God. You're not the fourth member of the Trinity. Stop acting like you are. Right? God is God and we are not. You can trust Him with the outcomes of your life. When you consider your shape and you consider the voice of the Holy Spirit at work in your life, and you're willing to step out in faith and take action, boy, you can trust God that he will see you through. He will walk you through every single step. And it may not turn out the way you thought it would or the way that you hoped it would, but God will use every situation, everything that you do, believing in him, he will use that for his plan and for his purpose. Even if you make a mistake, Is God big enough to cover for your mistake? Absolutely, yes. 
Would you stand with me, please? Let's enter into a time of prayer. I just want to invite you, church, open up your hearts, open up your minds, to be challenged by the Word of God, to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in this very moment. I just want to remind you how very special and unique and loved by God that each one of you are. I remember as a teenager, when I was 17, 18 years old, I was in a worship service and we were singing. You may remember that old song. It's like a, a worship praise song that goes, I'm not going to sing it for you because I don't have that spiritual gift, but it, but it says this, there is none like you, Lord, there is none like you. No one else can touch my heart the way that you do. And I remember worshiping to that song and just singing that to the Lord. And I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit come back to me. It's like a, a reciprocal response. And it's like the Lord told me, Brian, there is none like you either. And it was in that moment that I felt God's love. And I felt that, hey, God made me with a special uniqueness and a shape. And I felt that from the Holy Spirit and I felt the love of God that He Himself has created me this way. And I can rest in His love and I can be secure in who I am. And I am safe 100%. Why? Because He created me. And He made me just as I am. So as I was singing, Lord, there's none like you, there was that moment, that still small voice where that said, Brian, but I think there's none like you. God has put his fingerprint, his stamp, his shape on our lives. And if we will open ourselves up and we will seek God's face, my friends, we will know more about what is God's specific will for us? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. I thank you so much, God, for what you've done in each of our lives and in my life, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you've created me. You've created each one of us with a special sense of uniqueness. We are created in the image of God and you have shaped us. You have given us gifts. You have given us abilities. Lord, you have placed things in our hearts. You've given us experiences. You've allowed to shape and to mold us into the people that you desire us to be, God. And Lord, you have given us personalities. <laughs> You have given us wonderful personalities, God. And we thank you. Come on, church. Let's just thank him for a moment. Let's thank him that he has shaped us.